Hello, this is Mr. Montgomery. In this video, we're going to be doing some example problems of balancing chemical equations. And this is especially for my online Physical Science 2 lab students, just to give you some examples to go by. I'm gonna put a link in the description below to these example problems that we're about to be working out. Three examples that are gonna get progressively a little bit harder as we go. And so the point of balancing chemical equations is it's kind of like a recipe. You know, if I want to make a cake, I know I need some sugar and some flour and some eggs, but you have to put those things in in the right proportions. It's the same way with chemical equations. What's the correct proportion between these reactants to produce the product? So this first one, this would read as aluminum plus oxygen yields aluminum oxide, but we want to balance these equations. So one technique I like to use for beginners here is just to keep track of your atoms on each side. The law of conservation of mass is if we start with a certain number of atoms of aluminum, we need to end up with that same number of atoms of aluminum. And so let's count what we have currently. Currently, we have just one aluminum atom. Here we have two atoms of oxygen because oxygen always comes as, oxygen gas is always O2. It's not just oxygen atom single by itself, it's two reacted. And then on our product side, we have right here two aluminums and three oxygens. So our goal is to make these numbers identical on each side of the equation. And so I can tell right off, okay, well, here, um, if I have two oxygens, and then on this other side I have three, that I can end up with you know, some number they have in common, okay? The least common multiple is, you know, the term you use in math. Well, between two and three, I could get both of these to six atoms. And I could do that by right here. If I multiply three times two, that's gonna give me six oxygens. Here on the other side, if I put a two here, then this two times three is gonna give me six oxygens, but it also changed my number of aluminums. Now I have two times two is four aluminum atoms. So right now I have six oxygens on both sides. I need to now fix the number of aluminum atoms. I have four on the right, so now I need four times one to give me four aluminum atoms on the left side of my equation as well. And that one is balanced. So now this is saying four aluminum atoms plus three oxygen molecules is gonna yield two molecules of aluminum oxide. All right, come down to this next one. Okay, this is potassium chloride. That can be confusing. This is not potassium carbon iodine. This is potassium chloride plus zinc phosphate yields zinc chloride plus potassium phosphate. And so I have potassium, I have chlorine, I have zinc. And you see this phosphate, this PO4, it exists as a polyatomic ion. So I don't need to separate it into the phosphorus and the oxygen. I can treat PO4 like it's one thing because it stays together on both sides of the equation here. And I like to make sure I put these things in the same order on both sides as well, not necessarily putting them in the order they are on this side. So in the beginning, I have one potassium one chlorine, three zincs, and I have two of these phosphate ions. On the opposite side, I have three potassiums, two chlorines, one zinc, and one phosphate. So there's several places we could begin here. We could start with, you know, right here at the potassium at the top of the list. We got three on the product side, only one on the reactant side. So we could say, okay, well, I got three over here. I'm gonna need at least three on this side. And so three times one is now three. Three times one also now have three chlorines. 
and I can see the chlorine on the other side only have two. So I already know there's gonna be an issue we're gonna run into here in just a moment. All right, and then wherever we wanna go next. Okay, so maybe we say, okay, well, zinc. All right, here we got three zincs and one zinc, so I'm gonna need at least three on this side. So three times one is three. Three times two is now six. Okay, so I just fixed zinc, but now my chlorine is messed up again over here. And again, I'm showing you this kind of in a you know, realistic way that I wouldn't expect you to just knock this out perfectly as you're beginning to balance equations. So I'm trying to work it out that way as well. All right, so let's go back, let's fix this chlorine because it's messed up. It wasn't fixed in the first place, it was three and two, but now it's three and six. All right, so if I need six chlorines over here, then I'm gonna need to come in here and do six times one is six, but now six times one is also six potassiums. Okay, now let's take care of that potassium. I have six over here. I'm gonna need six potassiums on this side. So I'm gonna do two times three to give me six potassiums. That also now gives me two of these phosphate ions. So I'm gonna put a one right here. If you don't, the one's understood, okay? But now six potassium chlorides plus one zinc phosphate yields three zinc chlorides plus two potassium phosphates. You know, had we started with the phosphate, you know, we could have maybe made this a little bit easier on ourselves and not have to come up here and do a couple of times to fix the potassium. But a lot of times, you know, it's just kind of trial and error. You start with one thing, you fix it. You might have to go back and fix it again later. So let's come down here to this third one. We have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So this is saying ethane plus oxygen produces carbon dioxide plus water. This is an example of a combustion reaction. And so let's count what we have in the first place. We have two carbons, six hydrogens, two oxygens for our reactants. Now we have one carbon, two hydrogens. We got two plus one, we got three oxygens. And so where do we want to start fixing this one? Again, we could start here at you know, the top of our list if we wanted to. We could start with the hydrogens here. Uh, you probably don't usually want to start with oxygen, especially considering you have O2 and another separate oxygen over here by itself. So let's say, okay, well, what if we started with hydrogen? If we started with hydrogen. I've got six. I want to find six over here. I'm going to put a three. Three times two is six, but now three times one, that's three oxygens, plus those five oxygens. All right, so hydrogen's good. Let's look at this carbon. I had two, I'm gonna put a two here, so two times one is two carbons, but now two times two is four oxygens, three times one's another three oxygens, so now we have seven oxygen atoms. All right, so here I'm looking at this and I'm saying, okay, I have seven oxygen atoms. How can I get seven over here? Well, you could think of it as if I do 3.5 times two, that would give me seven. Problem is you can't have a half of a molecule. So I can't leave this as 3.5. But what I need to do is think of it as, okay, how would I get rid of 3.5? I don't round it up to four or anything. I wanna think of as I need to come in here to multiply everything by two. So this is a one. I'm gonna multiply it by two. This 3.5 times two becomes seven. But whatever you do to one of these, you gotta do it to all of them. So this two times two becomes four. This three times two becomes six. And so what that would have done is doubled every number that we have down here. And you're welcome, of course, to go back and double check. But four carbons, 
four carbons, 12 hydrogens, six times two is 12 hydrogens, seven times two is 14 oxygens, there's four times two is eight, plus six more, and eight plus six is 14. And so everything there is balanced. So I hope those example problems give you a good idea of the calculations and the problem types that you're going to be solving and working out after you perform your experiment or as you perform your experiment. And as always, if you need more help, then feel free to reach out to me and y'all have a great day.